for your faithfulness. Amazing Lord, how far you have come. We're grateful for all you have done for us time and again. Year after year, the miracles, great and small to have come through again and again we want to say thank you lord thank you for sunshine of rain wholeheartedly thank you lord thank you we'll say
Hello and welcome to IES Online Service. My name is Tirza and I am the digital pastor here at IES. And I want to take the time to welcome all of you to our online service, especially if this is your first time or you're just checking out our online service, we would love to get to know you. There is a QR code on the screen and a link in the chat. And if you just click on that and fill out a very simple form, we would love to connect with you and share with you a little bit about IES and IES Online Ministries. Friends, this is the start of Missions Month at IES, and we are super excited. And Pastor Dave has a message for all of us to talk about missions and what that means. And IES has always been passionate about missions. And so we invite you to be involved, to pray, to give, to try out one of our outreaches. So what are you waiting for? Enjoy the service. Ah, exciting. Something is different here. You see, I'm every time something is different. So, but um, I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad to see you all, and I want to welcome you. My name is Marian, and obviously, um, I'm part of the best department. And I yes, the kids. Woo -hoo. Yep, 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 yep. And obviously, it's missions month. And um, as you could see already, and things are different. And I'm so sorry, I have a mission for you right now. Uh, and your mission is, remember what you said, like, go, go and be like Jesus, make disciples. Now I want you to go and quickly say to someone, I'm so glad you're here and mean it. Stand up, find at least two people, and then in the progress, please move also more to, to the front. Because you're so far away. <sighs> yes, you're on a mission right now. And it's not a mission impossible, it's a mission possible. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, and I welcome everybody also on, at home who's listening. Uh, all right. Uh, what, what, you, you moved all back to the same places? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but to the front, you can hear better, <laughs> feel more. Yeah, all right. right. Uh, come on. <laughs> Don't let me. Uh, I have a mic, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> With the kids, I always do like one, two, three, four. I count down, and then everybody's moving. But I guess I can do that with you, all right? <laughs> Never mind. All right. Let us just um, open in a word of prayer. Yes. Father God, I just thank you for everyone who's here. I thank you for everyone who's listening at home. I know, Father, you, you did not create us just to use more space up on this earth. You designed us all to make a difference. Our lives are significant and of great value to you. I pray that we will use our lives to honor you. To be grateful. To be content. There are times where we face trouble. But more importantly, you are always there. I thank you for walking alongside us. I thank you that absolutely nothing can separate us from your love. My prayer is that the light of your presence will right now fill this place. Speak through Pastor Dave to us. Help us to focus on you alone. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon and happy Saturday, church. It's, today is the, Lord, the day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. And welcome to All Guitar Weekend here at IES. Yes. We have a wonderful setup. Just everyone's people from our congregation joining us uh, to worship the Lord. So can I invite everyone to stand up and uh, join all of us in worshiping? I was there. 
blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fault man in the fire time after time born of his spirit washed in his blood and what he did for me on Calvary is more than the come on sing it with me together I trust in God my Savior
together. I trust in God. Come on, from your heart, sing it. And just worship. Tell him that you love him and trust him. He should never fail me, Lord. He will never fail. What an inspiration, really, really good. One of these years I'm gonna learn how to play the guitar. <laughs> Actually, well, I don't need to because we have all these talented people here, so this is great. Yeah, really, really good. All of you, really, really good. We're gonna go to the Lord in prayer and, and, and we're gonna start off with prayer for our missions program. This launches our missions month, October's missions month every year. And we're gonna start off by praying three specific things. We wanna pray for all the programs of our missions month and, and there's a brochure I think you all got when you came in and it can give you more details about that and you're gonna hear more about it the next few weeks. And we wanna be not only praying for our, our work as IES, but we're a part of the Gracious Sea Dung Jaman Ala in the Indonesia and we wanna pray for the missions program. That we, Gesia in Indonesia, the group we're a part of, has 2,500 churches all over the country. And it's great that we can participate in sending missionaries from Indonesia to other places. You'll learn about that. But what really needs to happen is that all of the 2,500 churches, no matter what their size, no matter their situation, needs to also be involved in this. You know, we, we have the resources to do maybe more than other people can, but they can pray. And maybe we could even find some of the most talented missionaries from some of those. So we need to pray for the GSTI. And then, of course, we want to pray for all of our community partners. IES has community partners. These are, these are uh, neighborhoods or schools or places where we work with different people in the community, and we do a lot of different things to minister to them. And again, you'll be able to read that, all about that in the brochure, and I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if everybody picked up a brochure. Uh, my sermon's going to be very boring, so you want to have a brochure to have something to read. <laughs> And for those of you online, we're going to have a link for that so you can get it, but you, you need to pay attention if you're online. So, so that's going to begin the beginning of our prayer, and then we're going to come back around. And, and well, let me just inform you before that. Um, I'll also be praying for my wife. Thank you for all of you who prayed for her. We spent uh, the week in Singapore. She had an awful lot of stuff done to her teeth and her gums, and she's had a very unpleasant last few days, and she's taking the weekend off. She's not going to be in church. Her face is swollen, and and things like that. Uh, thank goodness, by the way, for uh, the COVID because everybody's used to people wearing masks. And so when she was in town, she didn't have to let people see where she had a missing tooth. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell her I said that, okay? Sorry, babe. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm sure she's watching online. And then uh, uh, Pai Edwin, who's one of our deacons and, and he and his family have been in the church for a long time. He has a very severe infection, bacteriological infection of his knee. And it's, um, it seems to be something that can be handled by the doctors, but it is really, really very severe. And so we really need to just pray that the Lord would bring healing. The medication process that they have should be able to take care of it, but it is a very severe thing. So we're gonna be praying for that. And of course, we're gonna be praying for everybody who has a need. So uh, let's be looking to the Lord and let's begin our time of prayer. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we come before you now and we lift up the different mission partners and mission program we have here in IES. We thank you that when we look at you and we see your character and the character of Jesus, we see that, that, that caring for others and giving to others and reaching out to others is a part of what it means to be like you. And so we lift up uh, our, all of our missions activities in this month. Father, we thank you for the different opportunities. We thank you for the different people who have served. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with them and help each and every one of them. We pray, Father, that you would just allow us as a church, to see beyond ourselves in every opportunity and every possibility, Lord. I pray, especially we pray for all of the Assemblies of God of Indonesia, Geas Jadi, Indonesia, Lord. So many different churches, large churches, small churches, scattered all over this country. But we believe that it is the desire that you have placed in the heart of the leaders that Indonesia would not just be receiving people who would come from outside and minister the gospel, but would also be sending people. That some of the people in Indonesia are uniquely talented and uniquely trained and educated and prepared for their backgrounds 
to proclaim the gospel in places where other people would not be as effective. And so, Lord, we pray that the whole of the GSGI would just be stirred up and that they would prepare and to move forward uh, in this area of, of, of praying for missions and sending for missions and all of these different things. Lord, we pray that you would just allow these things to be accomplished. And Father, we have many, many community partners that we work with in community relations with, with preschools and different places that are very needy. We, we work with other schools. We work with a lot of uh, different act, organizations and activities that provide ways to reach out to people. And of course, in, in some of these places, but not all of the places, we also have a very strong emphasis in sharing faith with those people and people drawing and coming close to you. And even in those areas, Lord, where we're just reaching out to people in, in godly love, in Christian love, Lord, we pray that they would receive the gracious gifts and the gracious care we, we lavish over them, and they would understand it comes from our hearts who have been transformed by Jesus. Father, we thank you for these things, Lord, and we pray also, Lord, for the needs that we have here as a congregation. I lift up my wife to you, Lord. I pray that you would just help her healing to go well, help the healing process to go well. And, and, and then she wouldn't have any more problem with these. And we lift up by Edwin to you, Lord. We pray that you would just uh, allow the medication that he's taking and the, the treatment that he's taking to overcome this, uh, this bacteriological infection, Lord, and that is there would be complete healing. Father, there are many people here tonight that have different kinds of, of physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, all kinds of different things. But we lift up each and every person to you, Lord, and we pray that you would meet whatever need that they might have. Put your hand upon them, Lord. Draw them close to you and help them know that their hope and trust is in you. We thank you for these things, Father. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats again. Oh, everybody deserted me. Now, this is the first weekend of the month of October. And so we want to have some special celebrations for those people who are having birthdays and anniversaries in the month of October. If you have a birthday in the month of October, can you stand to your feet, please? October birthdays? Any October birthdays? Oh, man. People are leaving. They must have felt bad that they didn't get an October birthday. No, serious? Nobody has a birthday in October? You know, that's highly unlikely in this size of a group. I know there's 365 days in it. Who, who, are, we, who are we pointing at, Rajiv? There's a... Oh, okay, okay, okay. There we go. All right. That's good. We need a princess to pray for. That's great. How about wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries here? Uh, okay, there we go. Okay. Congratulations, you guys. Okay, we're going to pray for these people, and we're going to pray for them, uh, the things that the Lord laid on my heart to pray. And so let's pray these things together. Can you gather around those that are standing? Father, we just lift up to you those that are celebrating these special days, Lord. We thank you that they can have these special days. And maybe somebody online is celebrating their birthday or anniversary in this season. For those who are celebrating birthday, not just in this service, Lord, but all through IES, those who are celebrating their birthday in the month of October, we pray that, that the good things that have been planted in their lives would bring forth fruit, fruit in their lives into the lives of others that the things that they've prayed about, the things that they've studied, the commitments that they've made to follow you, those would result in good fruit that would be really something that would touch somebody else's life. So we thank you for that, Lord, and we thank you that, that all of those who are having birthdays in this month, may, in the coming year, may they touch other people's lives and bring joy and bring many kinds of spiritual blessings to other people. And Father, for those who are... Uh, celebrating their wedding anniversaries, Lord, we pray that you would open up the right doors for those couples to develop a way to find, to mentor and reach out and minister to other couples who might be facing different kinds of issues in their marriage. Lord, we want to see our lives by, we want to see our lives being blessed by you, by you giving us an opportunity to reach out to other people, whether through the good things that you've done for us or whether through the experiences that we've had in our lives. We pray that you would bring these things to pass. We pray for the birthdays. We pray for the anniversaries. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. God bless you. This is the uh, 
missions bulletin. I hope everybody got one when they came in. If you didn't get one, make sure you get one on the way out. It's a lot of interesting stuff. And, and uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to spend much time talking about that. We're going to present over the next few weeks. We're going to present the different things that we do and talk about them. But uh, there's a few things I just want to invite you all to do. And, and before we start, I, I'm going to be sharing something really, really different. Um, I was just thinking about... Um, what a joy it is to be here and speak for this Missions Month. Because a lot of times in other places, and especially during those seasons when we were in the States preaching, um, we would be invited to go to a church and I would be invited to preach for their missions time. And most of the time that we preach about missions, we want to encourage people and have people understand that it's really important that they participate. And most of the time, we're talking about participating and giving. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm just really, really thrilled that that's not really an issue for us. By the grace of God, you guys are very faithful in your giving. And I don't want that to stop. But like what I said in the video, you, you, you're learning to be disciplined in giving. I'm going to spend time today talking about something that maybe you've never thought of before. And the hint was up there on the bumper video, which was a picture of a, of, of, of a I don't know, Dandelions are actually weeds. They're, people call them flowers. They're actually weeds. And, and they have all the seeds, and the wind comes along, and they scatter those things. And I'm going to talk about that and how that relates to our understanding. I'm going to ask you to consider some things. But before we do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do. One of them is you need to take out your phone, and you need to uh, go to your phone and go to the Church Center app. And if you haven't yet downloaded the Church Center app, we're going to uh, have a lot of people ready to help you and, and everything else like that. And so just check in. And it's a little, there we go. It says check in. And, yep, yeah, IES weekend service. Looks like they must have updated the app a little bit. There's something a little bit different. Okay, I'm good. And then I want to just share a couple of things with the uh, congregational profile. This is, I find this really, really interesting. So what we did was we looked at the aspect of languages. One of the things about IES is that we're an English language uh, a church in a country where English is not the native tongue. And in fact, uh, for many people, there is no really single native tongue. Uh, most people in IES speak Bahasa Indonesia. A vast majority of the people in Indonesia do, but this is an English-speaking church. So we wanted to find out how many people speak just one language, just, you know, or two or three, and we have this interesting result. Where's that going to show up here? How many languages do you speak? This is from our congregation. Look at that. At least more than half people speak two, which is logical. 1.8 only speak one. That would be me, by the way. And then 30% speak three. 40%, or excuse me, 30% speak three. 10% speak four. And 3.5% 3 of the people that go to IES speak five different languages. Now, there's a huge advantage there because the Bible was originally spoken. The guys who wrote it, in, wrote, wrote it in the Greek, the Gospels were written in Aramaic, and now we read it in English or other languages, and sometimes people are very confused about issues of translation. But if you know and speak two or three or four more languages, you understand that translation is, is not exact. It, you say, how do you say this in that language? I remember one of the times I was talking to one of my friends and, and somebody said to him, how do you say your brother's name in English? And he said, you can't say my brother's name in English. You have to speak my language to speak it, you know, and, and, and so things like that. So I thought that was interesting. And then the next question is this, what language do you speak? And this is the list of all the different languages, 35 languages spoken by people in IES. I was happy to see the, uh, I grew up in the Philippines in uh, the island of Negros, and I was happy to see the Hiligaynon language on there. Some people mistakenly call it Ilongo, but uh, it's Hiligaynon. And so that was the first language I tried to function in outside of English. And uh, I was glad to know that I have fellow Hiligaynons here in the church. So that was good. Now, we are overlapping this missions month. We'll be presenting all the missions things over this missions month. But we're also overlapping it with the final conclusion, oh, well, not the, the sixth of our seven transformations. So next weekend, uh, Kamlesh, who is our business manager in the church, is going to be preaching. And he's going to be continuing to talk about this topic of using money and how you see money, how you use money, and how you make sure money does not use you. But 
Today, we're going to ask the question, what does a dandelion blowing in the wind have to do with Missions Month? And what is it that we need to understand? So let me invite all of you to stand to your feet. We're going to be reading a very famous story together, and it's a story that you've probably heard before. And we're going to talk about an aspect of the story that you maybe have never really thought about that much before. So let's read together out loud, and let's read with enthusiasm. There was a named, man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with, uh, with you. Hold on, hold on. If you're, if you're reading through the book of John, you realize that Nicodemus is ahead, is ahead of everybody else around him. He's a Pharisee, and most of the Pharisees are mad because of the miracles that Jesus did, right? But Nicodemus notices that these miracles stand for something. Okay, let's pick back up on verse 3. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you cannot explain how people are born of the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, the breath of the living God, the, 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 the wind of God's presence would be here with us in this place. We desire to be people of the Spirit. We desire our understanding of mission to be framed in this spiritual form so that we may belong to you and we may fulfill the things that you have called us to do. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats again. Now, here we have this great story. Nicodemus is a famous person. We, we, we read about him, and this is probably the most famous story about him. And Nicodemus has recognized that God is at work. All of these other people didn't see what God was doing, but Nicodemus sees it. The other Pharisees got mad. Jesus would do this. Jesus would do that. We just finished a little while ago when we were doing soap together, talking about when Jesus spit in the ground and he took the clay and he put it on the blind man's eyes and a lot of discussion because it sounds kind of disgusting and why would he do that? But one of the things that he did when he did that was there was some debate amongst rabbis whether or not a person could be helped medically or healed on the Sabbath. And there were actually rabbis who said it was okay. But Jesus Took the, took the saliva and took the mud and he made a paste out of it. Therefore, he was working on the Sabbath. He, he's like, he's saying to them, you're watching me to see what I'm going to do, but I'm not only going to heal him, I'm going to work when I do it so that you're going to be mad at me for something. But Nicodemus is a step ahead of these guys. He's seen all of these wonderful signs, so he recognizes that God is at work and he wants to have a religious dialogue. Now tell me, master, you know, I'm this great learned person. I have this great degree from the university. I have all these different things. Tell me, and he starts off with this dialogue. But Jesus has a point, and he goes to that point immediately. This we see in the book of John all the time. What, when, when else does this happen? Jesus' mother says, oh, man, they've run out of wine. He says, look, this is not the time and place. She says, and he says, because it takes care of it. He meets a woman at the well. She wants to start this dialogue about where's the right place to worship. He says, you don't need to worry about the right place to worship. I'm not going to argue with it. That's not the important point. Jesus has a point that he makes, and his point is this. God's kingdom is completely different. Now, this is why it's hard for us to use the phrase God's kingdom, the kingdom of God, because we think of kingdom in terms of a location, a state, a, a government, a structure, and usually some kind of a geographical thing. But when, the, when Jesus talks about God's kingdom, when, when the Bible talks about the God's kingdom, it, it talks about the invading presence of God back into the universe that he created to transform and to change everything. As I've said before, it's as if the author of the play is standing on the sidelines and see things are going very bad, and he runs out in the middle of the play and says, stop, this is over, I'm going to make things different. 
That's what God's kingdom is. God's coming into his kingdom. And one of the things that needs to happen in God's kingdom is there needs to be a complete transformation. Now, how does this transformation happen? Jesus says, it's like the wind. It's only from the presence of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit of God, that these things happen. Some of you have experienced this for yourself. Some of you, I've watched it over the years. Some of you came into faith in Jesus from tradition. You didn't pick to follow Jesus. You were born into a Christian family. It was on your, you were maybe even baptized when you were a baby. You, you really never really thought about it. You thought, okay, this is what I am. I'm a Christian. I'm not this group. I'm not this group. This is what group I'm in. And yet over the period of time, as you've been identifying as a Christian, you've discovered that God wants to change you. And things begin to happen in your life. And you begin to hear the voice of the Lord and you begin to respond. And, and what was a tradition and what was a, a historical or even in some cases ethnic Christianity becomes a real Christianity. The kingdom of God invades your heart. Sometimes people come to Jesus out of an emergency. Sometimes in this emergency, they turn to God and they say, God, if you'll rescue me, I'll follow you. But then after God rescues them, they discovered that the following is a lot more complicated than they thought. Some people thought it just meant they changed what group they were a part of, you know? Like, I'm not in this group anymore. I'm over in this group. And, and God's going to restore everything. But they find out that God is going to change them. Some of you started to follow Jesus because you wanted to do better. You wanted to be a better husband. You wanted to be a better wife. You wanted to be a better father for your children. And you discovered things in faith that made sense and you began to do the things of faith and then all of a sudden, God begins to speak to you and you recognize that there's a lot more to this than just making these little changes. There's a complete transformation that's involved in being a part of the kingdom. Eugene Peterson, who, who is a, a wonderful man, I referred to him last week, I, I referred to him a lot. He's a wonderful man, a godly man who was a pastor and, and wrote really beautiful books. And amongst other things, he's the one who translated the message translation. And the way he says about John chapter 3, verse 5 is this. Unless a person submits to the original creation, the wind hovering over the water's creation. What's he talking about? Remember in the very, very beginning, in the very beginning of the book of Genesis, when it describes what was happening it said the earth was with formless, without, was void. There was nothing going on. And the Spirit of God moved over the waters. And out of nothing, God began to bring things together and make form and make all of these things. Well, what Eugene Peterson is saying to you and I is in the same way that God created everything out of nothing, God wants to recreate in our lives by the same gift of the Spirit, by the same Holy Spirit blowing into our lives. This invisible moving... The, in, the vi invisible moves the invisible, uh, excuse me. The invisible moves the visible. It's a baptism into a new life. And without it, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. So Nicodemus thinks this is a theological argument. Nicodemus says, I'm a, I'm a rabbi, I'm a legal scholar, or at least I'm a, a learned man. And I'm gonna talk about this and maybe I'll learn something for Jesus and maybe he'll learn something for me. And Jesus says, no. Unless you're completely changed, unless you're completely changed, unless you're completely changed, as changed as if you were born again, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. What is it that causes this to happen according to Jesus? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, the word in English that we use, spirit and, and river and breath, they're all different words. But when they were speaking, they were referring to the same kind of thing. It's the Spirit of God, which makes it the Holy Spirit, but it's also the breath of God. It's also the wind of God. And that's why many different times in the Bible when we see God wanting to express himself physically amongst his people, we hear about wind and we hear about breath. God breathes into humans and they become alive spiritually. All of these things are happening. And this is what Jesus is talking about. Nicodemus, you don't get it. 
What's going to happen here is not a reorganization of religion. It's not going to be a restructuring of, of Pharisees and Sadducees and temples and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to be just for this one group of people. It's going to be for everybody. God's going to breathe on everybody in the, the book of Joel. In the last days, God's going to pour out his spirit on everybody. Now, this is the first hint that we get in the book of John about this, that God is going to do something by his spirit that is completely different. We see at the very end of the book of John, and if you're not doing soap yet, next week is chapter 11. It's not too, pick up, not too late to pick up. We're going to see at the very end, Jesus is going to tell his disciples, it's good for you guys if I go to the Father in heaven, because when I go, I send the Holy Spirit. Did you ever think that it would have been good to, like, if you could have been like, you know, John and Peter run into the garden and find the tomb empty and all that, and you're going to think, man, I wish I could have been the third guy in that group, you know? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, folks. None of us here ethnically would have made it, you know? My ancestors were still trying to survive in Ireland and Scotland and terrible weather during those days when Jesus was on earth. And most of you were either somewhere in Europe or somewhere over here. But in the last days, the Spirit of God's poured out on all flesh, and all of us can experience the presence of the living God without being in Bethlehem or Nazareth or Galilee or Jerusalem. That's what Jesus is saying. This experience is going to happen to everybody. It's God's breath that spreads the seeds to the kingdom of God. Go. Oops. You're going to see that over and over and over until you get tired of it. That's the whole point. That's the point. That's how a dandelion works. I've always, you know, because where I grew up, we didn't have dandelions in Bacolod. And when I would go to the States every few years and visit relatives, I was so fascinated by these things. They're so pretty. Really, they are. They're just weeds. And those seeds that they spread are not the kind of things that you want to have spread. If you're, a, if you're trying to make a nice yard, if you're trying to do something like that, when you see the dandelions coming up, you, you, you want to get rid of them all. But when you see what happens there, you have all those seeds and everything is all clumped together and all of a sudden the wind comes along and the wind spreads the seeds. Now, a few years ago in our IES, we talked about being the seeds and the seeds of the good news and the seeds of, of sharing the word of God. And we talked about all those other things. And we talked about you and I, how we're a part of that. But it's the spirit of God that sows the seeds. And as we enter our missions month, as we enter our next year of missions, as we enter our next decade of missions, we need to remember that that ultimately this is primarily a work of the Holy Spirit and not us. I want to give you a few other examples of this. There's a wonderful story in the book of Acts about a guy named Philip and an Ethiopian. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of read this story to you because it's, I, you know, I was going to paraphrase it, but it's actually so good in the Bible. I just want you to follow along. I'm going to read it to you. It starts off by telling us that this guy, Philip, now Philip was not one of the original disciples. He apparently had had some things to do with the, with the group, but he gets chosen when there's this big fight in the church over money, and he gets chosen to be one of the people that distributes the money, but in order to be chosen to do that, he has to be a reliable, trustworthy person who people can see the presence of God in his life. And as it turns out, the first guy's picked as Stephen, and he gets murdered, and then Philip, and Philip just has amazing things happen to him. Early on, in chapter, uh, or early on in chapter 8 of Acts, we see Philip goes down to Samaria. So he's going to a place where people don't want to hear what he has to say. And he begins to preach and talk, and he begins to pay attention, and people shout and scream. Impure spirits come out of them. People who are paralyzed are lame or healed. So Philip, who's being chosen for his ability to handle financial books, actually turns into a healing evangelist, an interesting guy. And here's what happens. We start at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, the financial secretary of the country of Ethiopia, a very major world power. 
This man was a eunuch who had great authority right directly under the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Did, did you realize that 2,000 years ago, people didn't read quietly? Like if I ask you to take your Bible out and everybody read this, you know, you know, and they might make fun of you if your lips move. 2,000 years ago, nobody, people didn't know to read out loud. They, I mean, they didn't know to read silently. They always read out loud. How do you know that? Well, it's one of the things that was used to prove that Julius Caesar was considered to be a highly intelligent genius because people said when he reads something, he can read it without saying it. And everybody was amazed by that. So anyway, that's your extra history lesson for tonight. And, and, and he's reading the book of Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk alongside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. And he said, do you understand what you're reading? And the man replied, how can I unless somebody instructs me, right? And he urged Philip to come into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter as the lamb before the shearers. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? So beginning with this scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? And Philip said, no, you have to take a class for six months before you can be baptized. Oh, no, I think that's in another translation. He ordered the carriage to stop. They went down in the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself further north at the town of Zazotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way till he came to Caesarea. What happens in this story? This is a remarkable story because this whole story happens not just because of Philip's willingness but because the Holy Spirit spurs him on. The first thing that happens is an angel appears to Philip. Like I've said many times, I've only seen an angel once and I married her and my angel's at home today and so pray for her. But the angel prepares him and then the Holy Spirit speaks to Philip where he is and then and the whole thing is over, the Holy Spirit takes Philip away. What is the role of the Holy Spirit in this story? It is the Holy Spirit who puts this whole thing together. It is the Holy Spirit that drives the sharing of the message. It is the Holy Spirit that brings this remarkable event. This man is a high government authority of a powerful country, more powerful, not more powerful than Rome, but certainly more powerful than Galilee. And he's there to worship God because he's heard that there's a God of truth and justice. And he goes to Jerusalem. And now, this is parenthetical. You don't know it. But because he's a eunuch, he wouldn't have been allowed. He's not a Jew anyway. He wouldn't have been allowed in the temple. So he would have gone to Jerusalem and he would have just worshipped. And he's on his way home trying to read this stuff and trying to figure it out. And the Holy Spirit puts Philip right there. It's interesting to note that the Ethiopian church traces their lineage for 2,000 years. And the Ethiopian church is one of the oldest churches in all of Christianity. Now they do some things differently than, than we do in our traditions and the other traditions of the West. But they trace themselves back to the word of God coming. From this incident with Philip, the word of God was spread to Africa and began to spread there. Why? Because it's the sharing of the message, the sowing of the seed comes in the power of God's wind. Let's try it and see if we do a better timing. You know, these last few weeks have been really interesting weeks for me. Um, last, this last week we read John chapter 10. I have a really interesting story um, about John chapter 10. If those of you who are in soap with me, you've heard the story. Uh, it, it involves somebody in our church, and uh, since I didn't get permission, I'm not going to be able to tell you that this is a story of Ibu Setiawati, who, 
who I hope is online watching this, and if not, somebody play it for her. But she came to, she came to IES in the early days of IES because she wanted to be healed. And she wasn't a Christian. She didn't have any, any hint of Christianity. In fact, she told me the first time she met me in person, don't you try and convert me. I said, I would never try and do something like that. And then when she visited IES, she felt things were different than what she had expected. And so she asked, and I said, well, what you need to do is you need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so she read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. And in John chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus says, he's talking about being the good shepherd, right? And what does he say? He said, you know, I've got other sheep. And when that said, the Holy Spirit spoke to her heart. She stood up from where she was. She raised her hand. And she said, I'm one of those sheep. I'm not a part of the church, but I'm following Jesus, and I'm going to follow him. And she's been following Jesus ever since. Nobody set that up. I met her. She came to church to be prayed for, to be healed. And by the way, she wasn't healed. She read the scriptures, and the Spirit of God blew into her heart and brought her to Jesus. A few days ago, I heard a testimony about something that happened many, many, many years ago. A long before I, yes. We had met some people, and through a series of different events, we were invited by those people to go to pray for their house. Pastor Misha went with us. He played the keyboards. He wasn't preacher Misha yet. And we went into that house, and we went there, and everybody was really gracious and everything else, and it was wonderful. And I shared a message. I don't remember what I shared. And, and a few days ago, I heard from a member of that family. They said, do you remember that year that you went to that house and you prayed a blessing over the house? Yeah. So said, that, that's the day that my father-in-law decided to be a Christian because you came and, and prayed. I don't remember what I prayed. I don't remember what it was about because it wasn't about something that I said or my ability to say it well or how well Misha played the keyboards or how well my wife sang. It was the Spirit of God that blew the word and blew it into the heart of a man who grew up knowing about Christianity but was never a Christian. And that that day, at that time, he began that process of beginning to change because the Spirit of God was blowing it along. Last night, I met a young man who the last time I had probably seen him, uh, I think he would have been in elementary school. He grew up in IES, was always in IES kids, participated in all the different things. But he went away to school before he became a teenager. And I met him last night. Of course, I didn't recognize him, but he was telling me all of his memories, UOB building, and he said there was even an older building. It was a much smaller and funny shape, and that was Stocko for those of you who were ever there. He talked about being a part of IES Kids, and he talked about one time when he had been brought to, to be in the adult service, and after the service, he asked, he, I was asked to say something to him. I think it might have been when he was going off to go to school. Um, and I, I, I said some things to him, and he remembered the things that I said, which was really remarkable. So the main thing I remember was that you said you need to, everybody needs to not only have faith in God, but they need to have fear of God. And he remembered that. He shared with me how he had been raised to be a Christian. He had been to church. He'd been all those things. But he came to a place where he realized he was only really sort of a Christian. And he said, the Lord spoke to my heart. And I committed my life to Jesus Christ. He goes to a church that some of you would know, Holy Trinity Brompton. He goes to HTB. He said, Pastor Dave, he said, I volunteered. I'm helping out with the kids' ministry. He said, it's so exhausting, those kids. He said, I have to go for the first service and work with the kids, and then I have to go for the second service to be in the service myself, and I get so tired sometimes I, I, can, you know, I can't really pay attention. But his life has completely changed. He shared so many wonderful things to me. He moved from being a Christian to being a person who was embracing the kingdom of God. Why? 
It doesn't have to do with buildings. It doesn't have to do with any of the other things. I mean, thank God his parents brought him to church. Thank God the IES kids did a great job. Thank God he, you know, he went to a place. Thank God he found a good church. But it was the Spirit of God that came along and pushed those seeds. And those seeds are planted in his heart, and he became really born again. You see, the gospel is spread by the Holy Spirit. And we need to understand that. The thing that brought this really to me was something that a friend of mine who's now in living in Bangkok and serving in the Lord in Bangkok on a somewhat temporary basis, he shared a story. And this is what he, when he shared this story, the things I've been reading in John really brought this to the point where we are today. And then the Lord graciously reminded me of these other things in these last few days. He was in a church and a lady got up in the church and she spoke up. And she told this story. This was her journey. She had, a seven, she had a daughter who was seven years old. And her daughter came to her one day and said, I believe in God. Why? Because her daughter was watching TikTok videos. And a TikTok video told her about Jesus and putting her faith in Jesus. Now, God bless whoever did that. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know... I have a hard time making my phone work. I know nothing about TikTok. But God bless whoever said, hey, there's something out there that all of the young people are watching. Let's put the message of Jesus out there. And this seven-year-old girl saw it, and she told her mother, I believe in God. And her mother wanted to support her. And so her mother asked a friend about God. And her friend told her a little bit more about God, and told her where she could find this church in Bangkok. And so about two years ago, she started coming to church every week with her seven-year-old daughter. The Spirit put them and moved them and shifted them and took the word of God and moved it and planted it in their heart. The mom and daughter have now been attending that church for two years, and the mother's testimony is that she's following Jesus. Very extremely difficult decision, but she's following Jesus. I would have never, if I was in charge of spreading the gospel, I would have never planned using TikTok, targeting seven-year-olds to share the gospel. I would have never picked a seven-year-old child to bring their parent to Jesus. Usually we think of it the other way, don't we? We Parents bring our kids and we put them in kids' church and stuff, right? But here, God worked through the seven-year-old. God used this lady's friend who did know where there was a church and did know something about God. She asked the right person. And then God put her in a church where they didn't try too hard and they didn't try too soft. They just did the right thing to help her move along. After two years, she's a follower of Jesus. In the story of Ibu Setiwati, in the story of the person whose home we went and did a house blessing for, in the story of the young boy who grew up in IES who now follows Jesus, in the story of this woman in Bangkok, it's not, it's not what we do, it's not how we do it, it's not the things we do. Sure, we gather all the seed, but it's the wind of the Spirit that comes along and blows it. Let's show the clip. I can show it a few more times. Do you understand what I'm saying? For us to understand this is maybe a route that we want to go down, a road that we want to go down, that we understand that everything that we do about all of this missions it's wonderful to volunteer. I thank God, man, every time, every time we had a bunch of people go do house building for a habitat, we had more people than we thought we were going to end up having. A lot of people turned up and a lot of people want to do it. We've had people go to the orphanages. We've had people go to the preschools. We've had people go to every single kind of thing. Those are great activities. We've helped people translate the Bible. We've helped people send missionaries from Indonesia all over the world. We're adding some more. We've done all of these things. 
But the bottom line on this has got to be that it's just the seed that needs to be planted, but it's the Holy Spirit. We, we get the seed ready. We do our part, but it's got to be the Holy Spirit that does it and sends it out. We've got to be aware of that. We've got to be committed to that. We've got to understand that. Everybody stand to your feet. Oh, man, I'm way over time. That's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you, and then we're going to read together. And then after we read together, you're going to um, you're gonna sing the, the song of benediction. And what you're going to read is, is uh, Eugene Peterson's message translation that we read a little bit earlier of verses, uh, chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. And this is my prayer, that you would all be filled with the Holy Spirit. May we all be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not, I'm thoroughly Pentecostal. But everybody believes in the Holy Spirit. Everybody believes in the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to direct your life. You need the Holy Spirit to heal you. But we need the Holy Spirit as a church to spread the seed of the gospel. Everything that we're doing this month when we talk about all the projects we can have and all the things that we can do, everything needs the Holy Spirit to send it, and we need to be committed to that. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, come into our lives, come into our hearts, come into our understanding, come and, and lead us, come and direct us, come and push us. Let us be like Philip to be sent where we had no plan to go to meet somebody we had no idea to meet and then have an opportunity to bring them to know Jesus. Let us find in our own midst people who will be clever enough to send little videos out that will impact seven-year-old boys and girls. Let us have more teachers in IES who will raise kids so that when kids get older, they can make a decision to follow Jesus. Let us do all of the things, Lord, but let us do them in the power of the Spirit, not in our own strength and power. We pray for your empowering. We pray for your infilling. I pray that the breath of the living God would be poured out on each person here. And may the Holy Spirit not only bring healing into your lives, but may we heal the world through the power of Jesus, through the breath of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be with you and empower you. I pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's read together, starting with the, word, the verse Jesus said. Jesus said, you're not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water creation, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into a new life, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. When you look at a baby, it's just that, a body you can look at and touch. But the person who takes shape within is formed by something you can't see and touch, the spirit, and becomes a living spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you that you have to be born from above, out of this world, so to speak. You know well enough how the wind blows this way and that. You hear it rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from or where it's headed next. This is the way it is with everyone born from above, by the wind of God, by the Spirit of God. We don't know where the Spirit's coming from. We don't know where the Spirit's going, but let's be ready for when he goes. The video one more time, and then let's join. Spirit, sound, and rushing wind, fire of God. For within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. Yes. As we repent and turn from sin, revival and the smoldering breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind. The fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your Spirit, I, pour your spirit out. 
God bless you. Have a great weekend. Well, thank you so much for joining us this service. And there will be a QR code on the screen and a link in the chat. And if you click on that, you are able to sign up for some of the different missions and outreach activities that we have and also figure out more information about Missions Month and explore our partners and different things that we are doing. Friends, we are on a mission. So we are so glad that you are here again and please come next week for another IES online service. Thank you.